San Francisco's Muni buses and trains serve many riders who are blind or have low vision. For many of these riders, Muni is their lifeline to get around in San Francisco. Simple acts of courtesy from Muni operators can help these low vision riders access Muni services safely. And it's not just courtesy, it's the law. I used to work on Divisadero and Hayes, and I used to take the 21 Hayes quite a lot. A lot of times when I've been waiting at the bus stop, the door will open and the driver will announce the bus line. 71. It's easier and preferable when a driver sees someone who is obviously visually impaired, if they stop in front of me and say, this is the F, this is the 71, this is the 7. Our buses are set up to announce the line and the route when we pull up. When I pull into the bus zone and I see a customer with a guide dog or a cane, I make sure I let them know what line I am and what direction, like 71 inbound. This is the 71. Every time I get on the bus, I actually tell the driver where I need to get off, even if I think that the digital voice system is going to announce it, just so that they know in the event that it's not working. Um, I would say a good amount of the time I do get an acknowledgement, actually. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is your announcement system working? I'm sorry, ma'am, it's not working. Would you please let me know when I get to Van Ness in Sacramento? I sure will. Thank you. Here's my pass. Thank you. I've had a number of drivers be really helpful in terms of getting passengers to uh, move down a few seats so that I can have a seat in the front. Can somebody give this lady a seat? The bus driver will say to me, ma'am, please wait a moment. I want to make sure you have a seat. And I hear him announce or her announce that he needs a seat for a person with a disability, and I get a seat. As soon as the person gets on the bus, I uh, ask the passengers if we can have a seat for this person. Can anybody help us? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Besides the federal law requires that the customer give up the seat to the elderly and the disabled if they should need it. Buses who stop in bus zones that can accommodate multiple bus lines will stop behind one another. I cannot see what bus is behind. I didn't, I'm not even sure if there is a bus behind. The second bus does not come up to the front. Oftentimes, it's caused me to be passed up by buses, by F-line trains. Uh, and again, this makes me late for appointments. It makes me late for my job. I'm often anxious that I'm going to miss the bus that I need simply because I'm not fast enough to scamper down and, and find out which bus is lined up behind the bus that's currently in front of me. When I'm going to work and I take the Van Ness Street buses to work, and sometimes one of them will pull up right next to the other one, not in the bus stop, but parallel to it. And I don't know it's there. And I also don't feel comfortable walking out into the street. It's not my bus. Oh, is that my bus over there? I think that's my bus. Oh, God, I'm gonna miss it. I don't know how many times I have missed buses because of this. I don't double park. It's not safe for our customers and especially the visually impaired. Anything can happen between two coaches and it's Muni's policy not to double park. Well, normally what I do, if I can safely pull in the zone behind that coach, I'll pull in the zone, offload my customers, load the customers that are waiting for me. When the bus in front of me leaves the zone, I'll pull to the front of the zone for the customers that did not see me. Sometimes the bus pulls up and there's stuff in my way because the bus hasn't pulled up right in front of me. I have to figure out how to get around or through poles and newspaper bins, trees, bicycles tied to trees. I have to navigate through all of that stuff in order to get onto the bus. When I pick up a visually impaired customer, I like to pull up right in front of them, make sure nothing's in the way so they can walk right on the coach. Okay, take one big step forward. What I like to do, when I drop off a visually impaired customer, make sure you don't pull up at the shelter. 
you want to give them a straight shot to walk straight out so they can go to the left or the right on the sidewalk. So what you want to do is pull in front of the shelter or behind the shelter, never around any trees or poles. And I usually let them know, well, you have uh, 10 feet before you hit the wall. You have a straight shot and the wall is 10 feet away and they can make the decision on what they want to do from that point. Every now and then a visually impaired customer wants to be dropped off right at the shelter so they can find their surroundings and go to the left or the right from there. Okay, you want to take one big step when you step off. Shelter straight ahead. And if I get on a bus and I ask a bus driver, can you please tell me when to get off at 7th Street? The bus driver very often will say to me, just look at the sign up there. And I'll say, I can't see the sign, I'm visually impaired. And some of the time the bus driver gets it, and some of the time the bus driver doesn't get it at all. It's really difficult when you don't see well to, to understand where things are. It's one of those issues where people don't see it from the outside. And so when they see me um, having problems stepping off of curbs or stairs or uh, running into the side of a building or things like that, that could appear to them as though maybe I had been drinking, but the problem is that um, there is no contrast like between a gray building and a sidewalk. It is difficult for some drivers, I think, to understand that I am blind. Although I may look like that I'm getting around very well, and it did happen to me on several occasions with drivers who have questioned my ability to see and saying, oh, well, you're, well, you're really not that blind. That not only is infuriating, but it is something that just cuts to my core. Well, there are times that visually impaired customers get on the bus and they're moving so good that it makes me wonder how blind they are. But that's not for me to decide. Uh, I'm just here to take them from point A to B safely. I moved all the way across the country specifically to live in San Francisco because I knew that they had great public transportation. Especially when I first moved to the city, I had some of the greatest interactions with Muni drivers because I was just thrilled to be on a bus and being able to get somewhere independently. So I think that Muni drivers can really feel proud that they're making people's lives possible in a way that it's not possible in other parts even of this country. The Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990 is a wide-ranging federal civil rights law that prohibits discrimination against persons with disabilities. Title II of the ADA addresses access to public services, including public transportation for persons with disabilities. Tips for respectful communication with people with disabilities brochures are available. Call SFMTA Accessible Services at 415-701-4485 for a copy.